This is Izzy. <laughs> Isabel. And this is my and Godel. Why don't you sit there? Whatever. Okay. Hello, everybody. We are really excited and thrilled to welcome today Marianne Godel from the Burning Man Project here in Paris. Marianne is a CEO of the Burning Man Project. And uh, we're going to have a chat about how this event um, participates to build an impact culture in the world. Um, I am Isabel Mass, and I'm a French Burners. We do have a small community here and um, how it started, because uh, Marianne wanted me to explain how it started. Um, I went to Burning Man in 2010, and my friend in San Francisco who invited me to Burning Man say, you know, it might change your life. And I was like, yeah, it might change my perspective on life, but I don't see how an event in the desert can change my life. And it did in so many ways, it's amazing. So. Um, First, when you arrive in the desert and you see all those people together uh, in a really remote place, very hot and dry, to build big sculptures, but also camp, bars, restaurants, without money, just with tools. And uh, you, you don't have that much water, you don't have that much electricity, and still those people build these magnificent things. And you, it makes you relate on what you can actually do when you're a group of motivated people. And uh, it makes you realize that you can live with a bit less water, a bit less electricity, no air conditioning, and uh, no heating at night, uh, even though some uh, newspapers say uh, the opposite. And so you come back and you're like, yeah, I can, I can do that. Why can't I do that in France as well? So I came back to France, 2010, and I looked for the people that were doing that in France too, and I found Mark there and a few other people <laughs> that already had started the French Burners community. They had a non-profit. They started that in 2006, and they started to do small gathering of the French Burners. So we, we keep doing that nowadays, um, nine years later, and for Mark, 15 years later. We do gathering in France where we explain to people what Burning Man is like, uh, why it is a culture of maker and doers, and not just a culture of partying in a desert. Before we party, we have to build a stage that's a bit different than when you go to party somewhere. Uh, we have to build the stage, bring the DJ, bring everything, but we also build other things that partying stage and partying things. We build art, mostly, a lot of art. And uh, it's a culture of architect, makers, doers, you know, a lot of people. And we build a whole city, so of course a city, you need facilities. So we try to reproduce that in France with original events which is uh, small, it's only 500 people, but we try to reproduce the same spirit, because what Burning Man is about, it's about a network, a worldwide network, and that's what, you know, being a child of this movement, of this global movement, I never tired of listening about the story of this movement, you know, when you're a child, you like to listen to the history of your family, so Mayan, tell us about how it became this global movement 30 years ago. So how did it start? Yeah, it's great to have you uh, make the introduction, Izzy, because I'm really proud to be here in France where the Burning Man culture has been happening for 15 years. And I'll just give you guys a little bit of background about how we got here. Uh, this is Black Rock City. Has anybody here been to Black Rock City? Fabulous. That's a couple of dozen. Has anybody here never heard of Burning Man? Fabulous. Good. Well, I hope that you'll leave with a better understanding of what Burning Man is. I was interviewed by a reporter yesterday, and he said he didn't want to uh, go to Burning Man because he thought it was just a party in the desert. And after he did his research, he realized it's a culture. And we'd like to tell you just a little bit about that culture today. This is a space that holds nearly 80,000 people for a week in the Black Rock Desert. And Burning Man originally started on a beach in San Francisco. I don't even know where to point this thing. Uh, yeah. There we go. This is uh, San Francisco. This is a beach. This is 1986.
this is the, uh, the desert in, in uh, 1990. The uh, beach was not the right place to hold the Burning Man. Too many people showed up. They drove six hours to a Black Rock desert in the middle of nowhere. And it took everybody in the camp to put the man together, to put the camp together. Collaboration is part of what we do. And this is a night, that was 2018. And that is Burning Man today. We started very humbly on the beach in San Francisco, and the intention was never to build an event. The intention was to bring people together, and from that came a culture. And we burn the art, not all of the art, but we burn some of the art. Yeah. So, yeah, the 10 principles, like, we have to talk about the 10 principles, we because do. it's like, it's like our toolbox. That's what helped the movement become global and replicable. You know, when uh, someone asked Larry Harvey, the founder of Burning Man, who died two years ago, how do you do that? If I want to replicate Burning Man, what do I do? And so Larry wrote these 10 principles. They are just based, that things that you can get inspired with. But I think some of them, a few of them here, can inspire the people here yep. that want to bring the, the change in the world to develop a positive impact culture. So tell us about the one that are really instrumental to that. Absolutely. Uh, there are 10 principles. They're meant to be uh, descriptive, not prescriptive. They're not laws, but they're guidelines that are used around the world to make Burning Man culture happen. There are a couple that are really applicable to the gathering here at Change Now. One is leave no trace. Leave no trace means exactly that. Our intention is to leave the desert with nothing behind. It is a blank slate. That act forces us to be very reflective on all of the things that we bring with us. And by taking those things home with us, that's the beginning of the thought process of our own waste stream. And the very nature of that event puts us in a position to be thinking about our global impact. And then we take it from Black Rock City and we take it home. Two other ones I'd love to touch on are radical self-reliance and communal effort and also civic responsibility. See, the individual there needs to bring everything to survive, but we're doing it in the context of others. And again, that's how the leave no trace concept. Here we have members of the community themselves working to pick up every item on the desert floor. There is no infrastructure there before us. Here is an example of how we actually can use recycled materials to make our art. This art piece took six months to design, and then it took two months to build. They prefabricated it in San Francisco. Everything in this beautiful house, which became a stage and an activity for art and engagement, everything was recycled. All of the wood was from homes that had been pulled down, all of the art inside, all of the wallpaper, everything. Yeah, and that brings us to a new subject. Burning Man in invented pretty much the concept of live no trace 20 years ago. Uh, people use recycled wood, recycled metal to create hearts. We use few water, few electricity, but yet we do use electricity, we do use water, and we do have an impact. We have a global impact. We are really aware of that. And uh, I know you start thinking about the carbon footprint of Burning Man because, of course, we burn effigies, so people are like, wow, there is burns. But actually, the impact, the main impact, doesn't come from burn, I think. So I'm really aware of the impact uh, that Burning Man has. We're, there's a lot of questions about our, our footprint, our carbon footprint. Um, is it really leave no trace? And one of the answers I think that is really important is to imagine is that Black Rock City is a city that can be prototyping change. We're probably the most innovative city in the world because we get to build it and we take it down. And we do that every year. We've written a roadmap, a sustainability roadmap that takes us to the year 2030. And I really look forward to the fact that each year we get to take the city, we get to innovate ideas for this future our carbon negative future that we'd like to participate in and we'd like to be the change makers. And we get to innovate each year what it's like to live together. We have 
a very creative environment filled with people that have a lot of new ideas. For instance, in 2007, one of our themes was the green man. And so we hosted alternative green technologies at Burning Man. And a Tesla was brought to Burning Man before they were even in production. Elon Musk is a well-known Burning Man attendee. And he gave the group a Tesla to display along with other alternative energies. And it's also well known that Elon designed the idea for the Solar City concept when he was on his way to Burning Man. So you can imagine that it's an environment, the harsh environment, it's a place where we have to live together and we have to innovate ideas to live together. So imagine that we're also doing that as it applies to the planet. And over the next 10 years, we're going to innovate and prototype ideas that involve how people can be off-grid. There's even some groups that are producing battery systems that are um, portable, so that then they can be shared with other events in the United States so that we, people can learn what it's like to be living off of renewable, renewable energy. Yeah. So I'm really proud of that work. That's important. The 2030 fo uh, carbon footprint map is very important. Tell us a bit about what can people bring home and how we can assess the theme of this uh, table, which is uh, how to bring a culture of change and impact in the world. We have this network in the world. We are Burning Man Movement is in 45 countries. I think we organize 100 events around the world. Uh, how did we develop this culture and how do we make it, how do we export the fact that it's a culture for change and impact? Well, that's the part that I get really excited about. When people ask me what it is about Burning Man and it excites me, this map excites me. This is a map that shows the activities that are happening around the world where the leadership has been organically developed, not by the organization, but by the local individuals themselves. That's why Izzy had Mark raise his hand. On his own, after he left Burning Man in 2006, he decided to help bring burners together and create community that has now grown into a very active community here in France, in fact, all over France. And I get excited because the story I was just telling you about being an innovative culture, being a culture of creating ideas, and in fact, really being in a culture of change and collective you know, progression, this is what you can do with something like Burning Man. The culture gathers and it disperses. And these are the places in, in the world where individuals are taking what they've learned from Burning Man and replicating it and doing it again. And it's not just, this is actually, uh, this is Midburn. This is in Israel. And there's also one in South Africa. And both of those, those are 13,000 people. So if you can imagine the idea that Burning Man is a temporary city, Black Rock City, Nevada, but similar cultural happenings are happening around the world using the same principles you saw, using the same innovation around sustainability. And this image I love. We're not just doing gatherings. This is not just about celebrations. We're also doing civic work. This is a park in Moscow where the Russian burners, on their own design, their own ideas, decided to clean up a park. The movement for Burning Man to bring people together to make change happen is not just a celebration in an overnight event. And as well, you know, there is some movement that split up from Burning Man. We created, being a people, a culture of doers, uh, some people suddenly emerge, emerge from the Burning Man movement to create good for the communities. And like, tell us about the Black Rock Labs, for example. Very exciting project. Yes, uh, my two favorite groups, which are closely affiliated with the organization, one is called Burners Without Borders. And they happened first, and then Black Rock Labs, which was called Black Rock Solar. And this is an image of um, volunteers that are together installing solar in a high school near the town where Burning Man happens. And this happened because 
the Burners Without Borders group was not called Burners Without Borders. They were just Burning Man people that gathered after the Hurricane Katrina in Louisiana in 2005. And then 2006, the group dispersed and they wanted to continue doing the civic work they were doing. And a donor gave them solar panels. They took them to Burning Man. They powered the man structure that you saw earlier. And when they were done, they went and installed them in a school. That was so empowering that they continued to do that for 10 years. They used tax credits in the state of Nevada. For 10 years, they built a team that were staff and volunteers. They were teaching people how to maintain the solar that they were putting in these communities. They were doing it for hospitals and for schools. And when the tax credits changed, the group decided to take what they learned, to take the infrastructure, the relationships, and call themselves Black Rock Labs. And now they're actually prototyping different kinds of sustainable energy in the Burning Man community. They're leading a charge to actually raise money. <laughs> they're raising money to fund sustainable and portable energy so that we can take the Burning Man event off the grid, which is an extremely ambitious idea that I know we'll get to. It's just gonna take a lot of work. But once we get there, it's something that we can teach other communities, particularly temporary communities and temporary gatherings. And what are the people here at Change Now can bring back in their own garden, in their own activities, whatever they, they're doing, what can they bring back in their, com in, their, in their everyday world from Burning Man to build a positive impact shelter? You know, I'm asked a lot about what's so important about Burning Man. Um, I speak to different groups in different places, and the question is, well, what can we do? You're just a party. And it's not that we're just a party. I really see that Burning Man is a place where people learn skills about working together. They learn leadership skills. They learn collaboration. It's a, it's a city, really, of volunteerism on a scale that we know doesn't exist anywhere. I've been to events. I've been to large gatherings. There is no infrastructure for volunteerism and leadership like we have at Burning mm -hmm. Man. Mm -hmm. And the lessons that we get from it about collaboration and working together welcoming the stranger can be the most powerful ones that people can take away with them. Okay. We can make change, but we have to work together. We have to be open to others, other ideas. And we actually, if we place ourselves in circumstances that are challenging, not just every day, if we place ourselves in challenging circumstances, those will usually produce thought-provoking experiences, connectivity, uh, between people that will motivate you to be a better person, to be a me better member of society. Uh, that image you saw of all the maps has, it's about 350 people around the world that are then working with others. And I really feel like if Burning Man culture can provoke this kind of ripple of connectivity and creative change, I think anybody can. I think that's what we're trying to do in our events, in our local events. Uh, so Burning Man is a permission engine, that's what we call it. You know, you're allowed to do everything by yourself if you participate with other human beings. You can create wonderful stuff, art, infrastructures, Burner Without Borders, charities, anything can be, can be made by, uh, by a group of motivated people with uh, energy and uh, free will. Thanks a lot, Marian. Well, I, I want... I like what you told me earlier also about your group, that you don't have a desert. Not everybody has a <laughs> desert, but you all have a dessert. Exactly, because our French event is called Creme Brulee, uh, and the, uh, the claim is it's not because you don't have a desert that you cannot have a dessert, and uh, because I cannot pronounce those two words perfectly well. So yeah, we have this little French event. We are a wonderful community with 10,000 followers on Facebook. And you can all join it. Just go French Burners on Facebook and come and see us. And well, if you can, through the Burning Man culture, be inspired to work with others you've never met before. Exactly, that's what we do. You meet, you, you, the fabulous thing is you work with people you will have never met in your life. You know, some really creative architect or some butcher that is also a fabulous maker and can make peace of heart. 
or some DJ that are very young or very old. We have a DJ who is 70 years old. Um, and people you will never meet because our circle is always a bit tiny at the end, you know. And uh, in Burning Man, all of a sudden the circle expands and you meet those new wonderful people and you're like, wow. Well, and didn't we meet yesterday, Bob, over at the Plastic oh, yeah. Odyssey, the boat that's here? The, the, they met at Burning Man. They met at Burning Man in Africa, the Africa yeah. Burn. The Odyssey and Plastic The boat. Plastic Odyssey, the boat, the ship that's going to travel the world for three years. They were prototyping an art piece that was uh, being fed water bottles, plastic water bottles, and creating energy. And when the two gentlemen found each other in their ideas, that's how they got together and decided to get the funding and the support for the boat to travel around the world for three years. Yeah. So there, I was really excited to find that the, the creativity and the connectivity and the prototyping that we know happens in Black Rock City in Nevada actually is happening in other places, and then it's coming right here, and I didn't even know it. Permission engine. Permission engine. It, it, people are inspired to help each other. Exactly. Yep. Thank you very much, Marianne Godel. Thanks, everybody, to have listened to the Burning Man project.